but all starts here at Auckland's Eden Park. Its capacity expanded to handle 60,000 spectators. New Zealand's largest city is home to a sizable Pacific Island population, so the opening match between the hosts and Tonga will make an ideal kickoff. New Zealand fought hard to host this party and expects to be stuck with a bill at the end of it. International Rugby Board rules means New Zealand gets no money from sponsorship. The only revenue is from ticket sales. Tickets have sold steadily. By August the 9th, $195 million worth had gone and another $10 million worth have been snapped up since. The target is $223 million by the end of the tournament. Even if that's reached, it's still expected to operate at a loss. The government will help pay for any shortfall, despite already dealing with two severe earthquakes in the southern city of Christchurch. The city was supposed to host the English team. While the players are now based elsewhere, they got a tour of Christchurch, including what was to be their hotel and the stadium they would have played in. It's a famous stadium, iconic rugby stadium. And, uh, it's, just, I say, it's just sad to see it in this state and not, not having a game on Saturday. England is one of the sides and with a strong chance for the title, along with France, Australia and defending champion South Africa. As usual, New Zealand's All Blacks start the tournament as almost unbackable favourites. However, they also usually choke and haven't lifted the trophy in 24 years. Having something so special like the Rugby World Cup here in New Zealand, you know, it does add a little bit to the, the, the pressure and expectation. The fact we haven't won for so long uh, you know, adds to that. But um, if anything, the guys are more excited than, than worried about that at all, and I can sense that from the guys already. For the next six weeks, New Zealand will milk this moment on the world stage, hoping for a Hollywood-style ending to its long wait for Rugby World Cup glory. Paul Allen, Bloomberg.